especially thank you very much, Righteous Living Ministries <laughs> Church family. Amen. What a privilege it is to be here in the house of the Lord yet again, and particularly today, as it is my first time at your new church building. Amen, amen. amen. And uh, I am just speechless. I look at the order, I look at the, uh, the beauty and the cleanliness and everything just screams excellence. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what, that's what we're about. Praise God. Amen. And so, you know, I've been talking with, with your pastor and, and he just, you know how a pastor is. He's just full of energy and just bubbly and vivacious. He says, pastor, this happened. Pastor, this happened. I just never guessed how right now. But hold on a second. I'm getting another call. <laughs> I'm back. Where was I? <laughs> and you know that you know that it's an accurate rendition. Yes. yes. That the church say amen. Amen. But I say thank God for all of you here. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to minister. Thank you for uh, opening up the house of the Lord, Pastor Richard Rosenthal and Pastor Stephanie. God bless you. As I know they are beholding our order on Facebook Live, so everybody just said, hi, Pastor. Hi, Pastor. Amen. 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 So we're praying that they'll have an excellent, uh, looks like about a month off, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I heard yeah. last speakers coming. So we're just believing that they're going to come back rest, refresh, renewed, yes. and all just ready. Amen. That's four hours. Isn't it rest, refresh, renewed, and ready? Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. All right, let's pray. Let's get into the word. Uh, prophetess, uh, uh, how much time? I always ask for order's sake. You know, what's, what's the church norm? How long do you usually go? 12 hours is good. <laughs> Before we start, hey, this is my wedding anniversary. I'd like my wife to stand. Hey. Yes. Yes. Okay, so right. you can choose 
I was trying to figure out which child it was going to be. And I said, why are you sweating? If there's Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, I got three times. Whatever. Amen. Come on. Amen. And so, however you want to entitle your notes, but we're going to really focus today, right now, on blind spots to your faith. Amen? Amen. And so, if we recognize, if we use the analogy of blind spots, and all of us uh, being adults probably have driven in, uh, in some time in our life, and perhaps it's probably a daily part of your life, is that driving is just your thing. Uh, getting from work uh, to home and back and forth, grocery store, whatever. And as a driver in Lansing, Michigan, you know that you have to pay attention even, even the more. Amen to that? Yeah. Now, I have noticed, as surely as you have noticed, that there are always blind spots regardless of how careful you are. Yes. Am I right about that? Amen. What is a blind spot? You might say, well, Pastor Miles says this. A blind spot is something that someone else sees, but you don't see. All right. Someone else sees. In other words, he knows he's in your blind spot. You have a clue yet. You don't have eyes in the back of your head. That's right. And so you cannot see the car that sits at about, if, if you were faced at, this is 12 midnight, and to your right, a blind spot would be about 5 o'clock. At about 5, 6 would be directly behind you. Of course, you can see him, he's in your rearview mirror. So about 5 or 4.30 on that clock, you can't see him. Right. And in the same way, on this side, at about 7, 7.30, 8 o'clock, you can't see him. I don't care how careful you're being. I don't care how you're driving the speed limit. If you go to do a lane change uh -oh. while someone is sitting at 8 o'clock or 4.30 or whatever it was, you understand what I'm saying? If he's sitting there during that time that you're about to do a lane change, if you don't do a head check, right? <laughs> right. Yes. I'm telling you, if you don't do a head check, regardless if you're not speeding, you're going to have a problem. That's right. How many have had that happen? It has happened to all of us. Oh, yes. Absolutely. It's happened to absolutely everyone who is yes. who is a driver. Because being in a blind spot or being the, the victim of a blind spot is part of life. Yes. In other words, you're going to be in somebody's blind spot, right. you're going to be, and it's no fault of yours, maybe. I'm not trying to drive your blind spot, but i got to turn at the next intersection. Right. So I, I'd love to speed up so you can see me, but then I'd miss my turn. So i got to sit right here. It's up to you to look for yourself. Come yes. on. Yeah. All right, so, so as we recognize that there are blind spots, so it is in the Word of God. So it is in life yeah. as we navigate this Christian life. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us in Mark chapter 4, Jesus was by the seaside. He began to teach them by parables. Now it's interesting as we look at the Word of God that he calls this the parable of the sower, or the sower sows the word. What is a sower? A sower is a planter. A planter is one who takes seed and deposits it, in, in this case, in the hearts of humanity. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is the sower that sows the word. A farmer plants seed in the ground. But Jesus uses the analogy of farming agricultural society as it was to illustrate a kingdom truth. As a matter of fact, he said to his disciples, know you not this parable? How then shall you know all parables? Come on, somebody. Amen. And so as such, we recognize the importance of understanding this parable. This parable is, I like to call it, the granddaddy of them all. Kind of like the Rose Bowl. Oh, this football season. <laughs> I was checking my, my calendar just yesterday, and I said, hey Siri, how many days until college football <laughs> jumps off? Come on, somebody. <laughs> and I'm proud, to, I'm happy to admit it's not even going to be a month. It's just less than a month now. So at any rate, we recognize that any time that God is trying to bring forth a kingdom truth mm -hmm. and wants to make sure when speaking to the masses that the masses don't uh, take kingdom truth and trivialize it, 
He speaks in parables. All right. right. See, someone said, well, I know what a parable does. That's what was that? Oh, a parable is, is Jesus trying to break down the word to make it easier to understand. I'm saying, <laughs> <laughs> that is absolutely incorrect biblical ignorance on display. So what is, a, what is a parable? It is that speaking the truth in such a way that it camouflages the truth. Okay. That saying they may see and not perceive. That hearing they may hear and not understand. Yes. Lest at any time their sins should be forgiven them. Mm. Which sounds counterintuitive to the job of a pastor. I mean, do I speak so that you don't understand? <laughs> this is just exactly what I, what I quoted that Christ said. But he was speaking to the masses, not the church. All right. Come on. He was speaking to the multitudes. Yes. Amen. Amen. And so the multitudes sit there and they listen and they have their, their Sunday agenda on their mind while the, while the pastor's preaching. They're checking their Facebook. They're doing this. They're doing that. Come on, somebody work with me now. <laughs> That's what the masses do. Yes. Not the, not the church, not, not the ecclesia, not the called one, the called out one. But the, you know, the masses, they are on the fringes, they are on the outside looking in. Yes. They're looking out the window and doing this. Uh -oh. How much is that doggy in the window? <laughs> and they really are just observing your order with really not too much spiritual hunger. This is why Jesus said to his disciples, unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. Right. Yeah. He didn't say that to everybody. Mm -hmm. We might uh, go through the, I, I'm really watching relative to time and everything, but you know, I'm going to do 12 hours. I promise you that. <laughs> Let me tell you what. If my wife starts tipping out, do this. <laughs> amen. And sure say amen. And so, Jesus knew that not everyone present had ears to hear. Now, ears to hear is an old English expression. It doesn't mean that you have two uh, ears, one on each side of your head. That's not what the question is. He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear. It means he that has understanding in his heart. He that has an open heart. Uh, we can say it this way. Uh, Luke 11, 11 through 13, Matthew 7, 7 through 11 says it this way. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall what? Be open unto you. For everyone that asks it. Now it's interesting. Let me pause right there. The word, the, the, the verbs there, ask, seek, and knock, are written in the present tense, continual, present perfect uh, state, meaning that you're, it says, ask and keep on asking. All right. All right. Seek and keep on seeking. All right. Knock and keep on knocking. Yeah. For everyone that asks, and keeps on asking. All right. And I believe if you look at the Amplified Version, you're going to find it almost verbatim as I'm quoting. But, but it's trying to give the understanding that in the Greek text, which the New Testament is written in, that it brings forth a continual coming. Like, I will not be turned away. Amen. I will persevere in prayer. Mm -hmm. The effectual, fervent prayer. Somebody. See, not all prayer that you offer up is effective. Now, why? Yeah. Sometimes you are not persevering in prayer. Mm -hmm. You just you just too casual about it. Right? Right. You just too casual about it. This isn't McDonald's drive up. You know, <laughs> you, thirty seconds from the time you ask, you expect it to be here, and uh, if it isn't, you go away sad. Like the rich young ruler. No, 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 no. That's not the that's not the kingdom.
The kingdom of God suffered violence, and the violent take it by the force. Yes. That's not that you're going to have to bombard the gates of heaven. That's not it. It's that you have an adversary that's trying to block you. Yes. He's checking you, and he ain't giving you no free lunch. Yes. Right, right, yeah. Amen. Amen. So we recognize that there are blind spots to our faith, and Jesus wrote them down for us. Well, Mark did. And he's quoting Christ. Amen? Amen. So what are they? Uh, they are the cares of this world. I don't know, I should write this for now, probably. The cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, it's right in your Bibles anyway, and the lust of other things, persecution and affliction. You know, someone's counting you saying, Pastor, that's five. I can count. And you just enumerated five hindrances, five blind spots. Five thieves to the word of God. I thought you said this was six. <laughs> well, we'll get to that one. Cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, the lust of other things, persecution and affliction choke off the word and it becomes unfruitful. If you look at uh, Matthew's gospel, uh, chapter 13, verses 19 and 20, you'll find the same parable retold by Matthew, and his version says understanding or lack of understanding. Lack of understanding causes you to miss out on the word of God. It causes, how we say, a blind spot in your faith. If you don't understand what you hear, the wicked one comes and snatches it away before it has depth of her. Of her. Amen? In other words, you've got to have revelation knowledge. Mm -hmm. What Christ said to, to Peter was, flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you. My identity as the Christ, the Son of the living God, did not come from man. It came from my Father, which is in heaven. He told you who I am. Right? It was revealed by the Spirit. In yes. other words, in other words, until this word becomes flesh and dwells among you yes. in your heart. Yeah. The wicked one comes and tries to snatch it away. That's right. So we can't allow him to snatch the word. So it's imperative that you understand what is being said. Mm -hmm. How do we know this? Because the Bible tells me so. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's look at it. We see in Mark chapter 4, and uh, verses 1 through 12, that Jesus gives us the parable. He himself speaks the parable. But remember, he doesn't give us parables to make it easier to understand. Have right. we established that? Yeah. Parables are not to make it easier. Parables literally are to make it harder. Okay. <laughs> okay? Amen. Uh, let's just, one more time, 4.12, Mark 4.12. 4, 11, and 12. And he said unto them, unto you. Let's back up to 10. I got six. Watch this. And he said, and when he was alone, that is Jesus, they that were about him with the 12 asked of him the parable. Asked him to explain what was going on. They didn't get it. They didn't understand. And they had the humility and the transparency and the honesty to say it. We didn't understand. Can you help us? And he says, does he does he rebuke him? Does he does he say, Y'all oh, sorry a bunch? How long have I been with you? You don't even understand this parable? This is the whole thing. No, he didn't he didn't rebuke him. Watch what he said. Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without. Now without what? With, yeah, without ears to hear or understanding the heart. And they won't have the knowledge because they're closed like the Pharisees and the Sadducees. See, that's, that's the problem is that when we close our hearts, we can't receive from God. That's what people say often, that you can't receive from God with a clenched fist. Like, in other words, you're holding too tight on something and, and where's God going to put it if he was going to bless you? Your hand, your hand is closed. Uh-oh. Amen. 
give and it shall be given unto you. Yes. There is that scattereth and yet increaseth. Yes. But there is that withholdeth more than is meet or necessary. And it tends to poverty. Yes. Okay, that's free. Thank you. Um, notice what he said in verse 12. On, on verse 11. Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without, all things are done in parables. That seeing they may see and not perceive, that hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted, and their sins should be forgiven them. And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? How then shall you know all parables? The sower sows the word. Okay, from verse 14 to verse 20 is the explanation. Jesus himself breaking down his own suffering. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Have you ever, you know, if you ever wanted to say, Jesus, this is an incredible passage out of the Beatitudes. I wonder if you might Take a moment and, and break down your sermon. Well, he just did. Yes. Have you ever wondered if he could ever break down his own message? He yes. did it right here. Yes. Up to verse 20 is his own explanation. And it's because the 12 and those that were about him with the 12 pressed in and said, we have ears to hear. They didn't yes. say it so many words. But we really want to know. How do we know we, want, we really want to know? Because we're not too ashamed, we're not too proud All right. to say we didn't get it. All right. Now there was someone else that comes to mind that exemplifies the ears to hear piece. Now who would that be? That would be Nicodemus in John chapter 3. Now, this is a ruler of the Jews. The same came by night and asked the, asked the Lord, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man of God, for no one can do these things that thou doest except God be with him. Right? So he goes and gives Jesus credit, but notice that he came by night. So he's supposed to be a ruler and knows these things. Christ even tells him that. But then he comes and he talks about the new birth. And he says this in verse 6 That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. I'm in uh, John 3 6, St. John 3 6. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. What is he saying? He said, Nicodemus, you've got to be born again. You can't be born of the flesh only. You see, because his question was this, and it sounds silly mm -hmm. until you unpack it. Can I climb into my mother's womb a second time and be born? All right. This is what Nicodemus, a ruler, a, 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 a rabbi, yes. a, a, a Jewish synagogue man, yes. says, Christ, you say I've got to be born again. But what, how do you do that? Do I climb into mother's womb a second time and be born? Well, of course you can't do that. No. Common sense says that. But the principle of a new birth is that you have to die to your flesh. Oh, you, have right. to, yeah. you have to, in other words, you cannot come into the kingdom with I know it all mentality. Oh, I got it all mentality. Oh, yeah. I have need of nothing mentality. Oh, because <laughs> Christ said the whole need not a physician. All right. There you go. That's right. The great physician said, if you're already fixed, what do you need me for? <laughs> right. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. And so Jesus required Nicodemus to have humility. Yes. And in that heart of humility, he says, that which is born of flesh, Nicodemus, is flesh. Mm -hmm. And that which is born of spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again, for the wind blows where it listeth. Yes. Verse 8. And thou hearest the sound thereof, canst not tell from whence it cometh from where it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Yes. So the Spirit is the one that reveals to you the Word. Amen. Flesh and blood did not reveal Messiah's identity to Simon Peter. Amen. The Holy Spirit, the, the Ruach, the breath of God, the Ruach. Makadesh, I was out there. I all over the place. Sometimes I was taking a, 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 a Orthodox Jew in 38 years. I think my Bible said 35 years. I had I, I had updated it for a 
while, so I think it's 38 years. In 38 years of ministry, I had never had a heart-to-heart -heart talk with an Orthodox Jew. Okay. I mean, been to Jerusalem, wife and I, and, uh, talked with uh, several, and but never had the ability or the point of entry mm -hmm. to speak about Christ. You know, you can't just force yourself. You don't understand that. <laughs> right. That's the quickest way to be show the, the, the left foot of fellowship. Not, not the right hand. There's, there's the right hand and there's the left foot. <laughs> and so, so when you're talking to a, a Jew, there is a certain amount of religious piety mm -hmm. okay. that they carry. Yes. That the word was delivered first unto us. Mm -hmm. What can you Gentile uh -oh. tell me about the Lord? Amen. About Father God. What can yes. you tell me about him that I don't already know? <laughs> now, and that's the air. That's not the words. I'm not quoting anybody. I'm just telling you that I, I, I've seen this enough. To, so, so I said, Lord, this is, this is about three weeks ago. And I'm driving this man, drive Uber on the side post-retirement gig, right? And you're supposed to laugh at that. I'm not old enough to be retired, but you, my wife said, you can be tired, but you can't be retired. <laughs> and, and so uh, I was driving him from, from uh, Smoky Mom's restaurant all the way to Grand Rapids. Okay. And within about five minutes of the trip, I, I come to the understanding that he's an Orthodox Jew. Okay. No, I, I tell you Orthodox Jew as opposed to Messianic Jew. Mm -hmm. And Messianic would be that they are Christians, yeah. that they have received Jesus as Lord. Okay. Right. Uh, so Orthodox uh, still believes that Messiah is yet to come. All right. So we're talking, and he finds out. I tell him that I'm a pastor. And, uh, and we begin to talk, 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 and we begin to talk. How many know that the trip between now, from here to Grand Rapids, is a lot of talking? Yeah. <laughs> or else a very boring, stiff, uncomfortable trip with a total stranger. And I'm just like, I ain't gonna go out like that, you know? <laughs> ain't gonna happen. And so we're talking, and I say to him, that uh, I said, he asked me after about 15 minutes in the trip, he said, how did you come to your born again experience? Which just completely blew me away in the natural. You understand what I'm saying? Here is a Jew asking a Gentile, according to Acts chapter 10, and Cornelius' household was the beginning of the Gentiles coming into the church. Yes. Because the great sheep let down from heaven. Yes. With all manner of four-footed beasts. Come on, somebody. You know who that is. With thou, but I have called clean, call thou not unclean. Amen. Three times the vision Amen. came. Amen. Three times the vision came. Yes. And, and what happened? Peter said, I perceive that God is not talking about shellfish All right. and barbecue. All right. Come on, somebody. Amen. He said that the Gentiles should come to the church for such a time as this. Yes. And then at Acts 10, 44, while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them that heard the word. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Right. Amen. And they of the circumcision we're looking around and seeing that seeing these Gentiles being filled with the Holy Ghost, for they heard them speak with other tongues and magnify God. Yes. Now Peter stands up boldly. He remembered his vision. You know, right. so the, 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 the Holy Ghost had revealed unto him that he wasn't talking about shellfish and barbecue. Ah. He was talking about Gentiles. Yes, you and me. He saw us in that sheep. So then, he said, can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And you could hear a pin drop in that place. That place was just like crickets. 
And then he, then he commanded them to be baptized, and they tarried a few certain days. Now, the point, though, is that I'm still driving in the Great Rapids, and this Jew, this Orthodox Dox Jew, says to me, how did you come to be saved? Because mm. really and truthfully, he's telling me he isn't. Okay. He's religious, okay. but he doesn't have the Lord. All right. Because he hasn't been introduced to the Lord. Yes. So I tell him, now, I, the Lord gave me what to say because honestly, if you think about it, they know the word just as well as we know the yes. word. Yes. 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 And their garments for a bottom, depending on male or female, uh, they have memorized the first five books of Moses, which they call it the, 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 the Torah. Or, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. They memorized it. That's right. But you don't tell them. <laughs> they trip you up in your own book. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I began to. I said the. Only, I said the Lord. The Lord showed me. He said, "Give them your testimony." Yes. Don't overwhelm them with word. He knows word just like you yeah. know word. That's right. I said, okay. I said, you know what? I said, I was. In Lansing, Michigan, around as a as a sophomore at Western Michigan University, I was in Kalamazoo, and and my mother called me and said, "Son, the door is open for you to preach. Sorry, to, to preach, <laughs> to work again at Fisherbody. Okay. And um, it's my change over here. You worked there last year. I can get you back in now. And guess what?" It's the same place you work, doing the same job, and you already know the job, and you know the pay is off the chain. I'm going to say, oh, that's right. I have embellished, okay? But <laughs> my sermons are. <laughs> so she says, you know, the pay is incredible. So uh, uh, I just need to, you know, get the process going. And I had already been in prayer, and I believe in fasting as well. And I was in my apartment in Kalamazoo, and the Lord told me over the phone, All right now, tell her no. Yes. <laughs> All right now. <laughs> now, young people, I don't know who's here and who's, but you know, if, particularly if your parents are still alive, particularly if they're paying the tuition bill. I know, that's right. <laughs> Have you lost your ever loving mind? <laughs> I know the saved now, and I'm happy about it, right. and filled with the Holy Ghost and back with fire. <laughs> but I want to know who paying these tuition bills. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Can I And I didn't even have an answer for her except God will provide. Yes. God will provide himself a lamp. Amen. Yes. And I was her, I knew the voice of God. Yes. Even 37, 38 years ago, I knew that God said, do not go back to Lansing this summer. All right. I said, okay, all right. And it took every bit of me because she, she, she gave me that, that sound, that tone and voice that said, I ain't playing with you. All right. You ain't too old, old to take over my name. I really was, but she wouldn't believe it. And... So I, I said, Mom, I, I, I simply can't. I'm staying here at Western this spring and summer semester. Uh, God will provide. End of discussion, and you know how awkward that was. <laughs> well, what happened to follow justified my actions? Not that I knew, nor at that time did I believe that uh, anything would be forthcoming, but uh, the place where I was working and cleaning out these special tanks required special equipment. And unbeknownst to those that have been working, the release of the of the chemicals that were baked in to the cleaning tanks. It's kind of hard to explain, but you took jackhammers to and release this clay-like, paint-like substance yes. and, and then remove it. It was so painstaking. So you're making you're making good money, but you're working harder. That's right. At the same time. Well, that summer, 
the release of toxic chemicals mm. happened in the very plant, at the very place, at the very station where I would have been assigned. Why? Because the previous summer, I worked in those same tanks. Yes. Now, the foreman hears cries of help, and, and men are falling and dying like flies wow. in that very place. And then the foreman, you know how they have a white shirt, if they work in a factory, they tuck it in to their, they tuck their tie into their white shirt. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't get caught into any machinery. So he's running at full tilt to check on his men, and he got too close, and he does this. Mother calls me back. You can, hear, you can hear tears in her eyes as she's in her voice. And she said, oh, I, she tells me the story that I told you. And she said, I am so sorry. I am so sorry. I, I, will, never, I will never challenge you again on, on, you say you heard from God. I yes. Am, I'm, that's it for me. <laughs> All right. All right. And, uh, and I told them, so we're still going to Grand Rapids, you understand? Yes. <laughs> we ain't gone nowhere. We're still going to 96 or wherever. We're, no, that's Detroit. Grand Rapids. 139. 69. 69. <laughs> and we're making that trip. But this Jew is spellbound. He like this in the back seat. <laughs> and I told him, I said the following, and this is what brought me to this a second ago, 10 minutes ago. I said, the Ruach Makadesh which is Hebrew for the Holy Spirit. I said, I listened to the Ruach Makadesh. Yes. Like my life depended on it. Yes. Because yeah. he asked me, how do you know you're born again? And I could talk about what the Bible says. How the Bible tells me so. Right. Which is wonderful if you're a believer in the Bible, but what if you don't? All right now. Yes. All right now. They overcame them by the blood of the Lamb. Yes. And the, word the, and the come on. Word of their testimony. Yes. So the Lord had me use the word of my testimony, and He was all ears because you can't refute it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. See, what I just quoted uh, as far as uh, the events that happened at Fishermont, that's a historical fact. Yeah. Yes. You can go, I Googled it about six months ago. They didn't have Google or the internet when that happened. <laughs> Myself. <laughs> and uh, and so I said, just for one second, I just like to see that article. Do you know it's in the State Journal archived back around 1982, okay, 1981, something just put in there. Uh, accident, tragic accident, Fisher body. Yes, uh, and you'll find it. And so I told him my testimony, and he had ears to hear. Yes. It was no longer the letter of the law All right, God. which killeth, but it was the spirit which brings life. Yes. Amen. See, the Bible says that the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Amen. You see, he knew the law of Moses quite well. Touch not, teach not, handle not. Yes. Oh yeah, he, he, he knew it better than I did. But what he didn't no, he could speak Hebrew fluently and he understood it, but he didn't know the Jewish Messiah All right. who had already come. And now this Gentile is Gentile is testifying yeah, yeah, yeah. of the goodness of God. Yes. yes. And that he can have it too. Yes. The one in the next seat. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> We're still talking about the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, the lust of other things, persecution, affliction, and lack of understanding. How many are there? Six. Right. So we know that anytime you don't understand something, you're liable to have it snatched away. Mm -hmm. That's blind spot number one. Yeah. Number two, cares of this world. Cares of this world. That simply means anxiety or worry. Distraction. I'm just worried about this. I just don't know I can't get any peace. I can't. Well, that's the problem. You're giving too much of your peace away. You know, if, if, you know, you can't, you can't give Johnny a piece of your mind, Sally a piece of your mind, Sarah a piece of your mind, Marvin a piece of your mind, yes. of your mind and then wonder where your piece is. <laughs> well, Marvin's got it, Sally's got it, Johnny's got it, and then got it. The first God that passes all understanding is to keep 
your heart. Yes. Keep, guard your heart with all diligence. Yes. From out of the flow of the issues of life, the forces of life. And so you've got to recognize what God is doing in the earth. Amen. Boy, I don't know. I see her. She gets up on me. No, we talked before. We are catering dinner at, at our anniversary. We're catering our dinner, and she's going to check on the food right now. That's what she's doing. Okay. Nice to meet you. All right, thank you, Doc. All right, now, <clears throat> where was I? <laughs> Cares of this world, deceitfulness, and which is of the first year to live your last day. Okay, got it. So, uh, the cares of this world are the anxieties or worries of life. You've got to recognize that any time you are in worry, you are really not in faith. Right. right. Okay. So, in other words, the worry, the worries or the cares of this world, the anxieties of this world, have crept in and caused the word to be unfruitful. So how can you stop it? Because I do understand how worry just tries to revisit. It just keeps coming and knocks and says, are you ready to listen to me yet? Like there's going to be two people preaching at all times. It's the voice of doubt or the voice of the Lord. Yes. Yeah. Now, which one you allow to preach to you all right. will determine how far you go in life. Amen. 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 See that? So now when you see the voice of worry, when you hear the voice of worry, you need to silence it. Amen. How do you do that? The Bible says, casting all of your care upon the Lord, for he Amen. cares for you. Yes. Humble yourself in front of the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Casting all of your care, yes. all of your worry, all of your anxiety. Cast yes. them on Christ. Yes. Yes. Put them on his shoulders. Yes. You know, he's called the Ancient of Days. He's been around a lot longer than I have. <laughs> but there's nothing new under the same sun. You haven't seen, there's nothing he has not seen. And Saul, since there's nothing new under the sun, and he's called the Ancient of the Days, and he does, he never sleeps, I am therefore going to sleep. Amen. Now, you can't sleep at night. Why? I'm worried about, no. Uh, I cast all my care upon the Lord. Yes. So he cares for me. Yes. I'm now going to lay myself down to sleep. Amen. 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 Deceitfulness of riches. What is a deceitfulness of riches? Some people think, well, that's a rich man's sin. I could be, but I see poor people have struggling with it as well. That's right. Yeah. I mean, and what it's saying is this. You are deceived by riches to think that if I just had it, all my problems would go away. You say deceived. Right. See? Amen. You're deceived by riches. That's right. And you don't even have it yet, and you're deceived by it. That's right. Because <laughs> it is preached a false gospel. The gospel, if you just had me, all would be well. Mm. See, that's the deceitfulness of riches. So trusting in your riches or wishing you had it when you have the ancient of days living on the inside of right now is being deceived by it. Cares of this world, deceitfulness of riches, lust of other things. Lust simply means strong desire. Mm -hmm. Strong desire. Yes. It can have a sexual connotation, but it doesn't have to. Right. So do you have any strong desire that is over yes. the word of God? So it could be a strong desire to have 5,000 friends on Facebook. Right. <laughs> to develop a social media presence and brand yourself. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. There's nothing wrong with anything that I said in balance. But do you love that more than him? All right. And this word. Yes. Because taking that out of priority and, you know, it's like, ah, I can't seem to get the word. Can't get the word. Yeah, but your your phone is measuring your screen time. Mm -hmm. Check and see how much screen time that you're giving the the, the Mark Zuckerberg, and then ask yourself how much book time, FaceTime are you giving to Jesus Christ? All right. Yeah. Um, Amen. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It's not necessarily. I'm not trying to preach law to you because I'm not. I promise you that I'm a grace man. But by the same token. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. So if you give yeah. Mark Zuckerberg seven hours a day checking statuses, you know, you're at a red light, you've got to, despite, you've got to reply to somebody. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> and they have beeping at you. So right. would you please drive? Right. And you're saying, okay, I will, just as soon as I finish my status. <laughs> How many of you are out of balance? Yeah. Out of balance. Yeah. yeah. That's all. That's all we say. You're out of balance. 
Okay, so cares of this world, the seeds of the riches, lust of other things, persecution. Persecution is when you are afflicted. Well, persecution is someone saying something about you for the reason of your faith. You know, like, because you're a Christian, I'm not going to give you a break. Hmm. All right, well, so be it. Let's, let's let my let's let my, let my Heavenly Father handle that. I'm not going to sweat that, but I'm going to give it to God. Now, if you haven't experienced persecution for a while, ask yourself, how salty are you? <laughs> yeah, that's all. That's all. And, and, and because if you are in a go-along-to-get-along mentality, mm -hmm. then you're not letting your light shine. Yeah. If you're letting your light shine, you're going to get some persecution. That's yeah. right. Because you're not greater than your Lord. Yeah. If they persecuted me, they'll persecute you. That's what he said. That's, right. That's what he said. That's right. So persecution, affliction, and of course lack of understanding. These are the six themes of the word of God. Now, after this is all over, the Lord says, let's go to the other side. We're over in Mark chapter 5. I'm, I'm about wrapping this up. But I, you've got to see this. You've got to see this. Don't miss this part. I know how we get, you know, about when you think of, when the pastor says, when the priest says, I'm in closing. You know, the thing I would preach at the uh, Bible says, in closing, and the members say, thank you, Jesus. You know, come on now, you laugh. That was a joke. You know? <laughs> so, so, but most of the time, preachers have about three in closings. They got three points to the center, they got three closes, like, it's, like an airplane circling the tower, trying to look for the point of entry. But I kind of show you Mark chapter 5, because Jesus has let us go to the other side. And I did not understand how important it was to go to the other side. I didn't really get the significance of going to the other side. Sure, I know that in Mark 5, the madman of Gadara, 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 all right, the gathering demoniac is there on the other side. He cuts himself. He's in the in the graveyard. Yes. He can't be bound with feathers. And I know that. And it's like, wow. So someone needs deliverance on the other side. Yeah. I get that. I get that. And that's true. But there arises a great storm between you and your mission. Did you get that? Yeah. There's always going to arise opposition to your mission. Amen. So these, these hindrances, these roadblocks, these blind spots to your faith have to be identified or you won't go to the other side. Simple as that. Because the first storm that rises up, you're going to say, carest thou not that I perish? Uh oh. Like the disciples did. Yes. Master, don't you care that we perish? Master, don't you care that we perish? Don't you see the storm? Don't you see? We are experienced fishermen. And we have seen our share of storms. We've never seen one like this. Don't you care that we're about to die? I told you, one of these hindrances is the cares of this world. Master, carest thou not that we perish? So they've already found the blind spot, right? We could have found the blind spot for them. Now, what I did not realize, and I need you to understand, is that where they were going was to what's called gathering. Gathering, or Gadara, was the capital at that time of, of the Decapolis. Decapolis was, in fact, it stands for 10 cities. Deca is like decade. Right? So a decade, the capital is 10 cities. And I thought about it like this. It's kind of like the Big Ten. I'm talking about um, oops, sports again. <laughs> you know, because I was like, Lord, why is there more? They should only be 10 teams in the Big Ten. It don't even make sense no more. It's like, how many, how many teams do you think are in the Big Ten? Show of hands. 18. 14. 14, 14, is that even right? Like, <laughs> that guy can do simple math? No, 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 that's what I'm thinking to myself. Why do we call it the Big Ten if we're going to let 11 in? Or 12 in, or 13, or 14? How many do you say, Prophetess? 
You think he's 16? No, he's 16. Who's the 16? I don't know how many there are. I only know it ain't 10. <laughs> All I know is I promise you there are more teens than 10 in the Big Ten. <laughs> well, the same was true in the Decapolis. Decapolis, you just like just like Superman was really from Krypton, but he ministered in Metropolis. <laughs> Jesus is from Bethlehem, and he must needs go to the other side to get to the Decapolis. Right. <laughs> Superman had Metropolis, Jesus had Decapolis. But the Decapolis had more than 10 cities. It was like, oh, 16 or so, something like that. And it represented the worst that society had to offer. Yes. It was, it was Hellenistic, as in Hellen, H-E-L-E-N, not Hellish, although it was that too. It was Hellenistic, it was hedonistic, hedonism on display. And it was everything that a Jew abhorred and was told to stay away from. So then when Jesus says to his disciples, let us go to the other side, they're like Peter said about the sheep. Not so, Lord. Are you kidding me? Nothing unclean has passed my Jewish lips. Three times he had been told the, the truth, and then he submitted to it. So when they did go to the other side, ministry was waiting for them. I submit to you that Righteous Living Ministries will experience its greatest breakthrough and victory when corporately you say, let us go to the other side. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Your pastors have brought forth an incredible breakthrough ministry, a, a word of reconciliation, a word of redemption, yes. and have literally walked on the water, so to speak, Amen. and moved into the Decapolis. All right, now. Oh. Amen. Amen. Moved into Metropolis. All right. Oh. All right. And I wonder if there are any Superman with capes. <laughs> 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 I just want you to know, is there anyone that can hear the voice of the Lord saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. Yes. I just want to know, is there anyone that wants to walk by faith and not by sight All right. with your pastors? All right. I just want you to know, are you ready for your breakthrough, which is on the other side? Yeah. I'm not sure if you're with me or not today, but I know this. That he that has begun a good work in you yes. 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 shall continue to perform it till the day of Jesus Christ. Yes. Yes. The Bible says, Now unto him who is able to do exceeding, right. abundantly above all that you can ask or think. Yes. And it is according to the power that works with you. Oh. Yes. This is how we get our breakthrough. Yes. But you've got to go to the other side. Yes. You've got to go yes. to the capitalists. Yes. And while you're on your way, don't forget to check your blinds. I know that's right. Oh, yeah. I know that's right. Oh. When God begins oh. to reveal to you yes. what you're called to do, yeah. there ain't a devil in hell. Driving around again. Oh, wow. <laughs> really, to me again, a little bit hard. I said, okay, 
I, I must needs go to the other side. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <I'm crazy. laughs> but my point is that you have moved into the Decapolis. You have gone to where no man has gone before. All right. You are ready to go into depths and heights and riches of his grace and say to a lost and dying community. Yes. Yes. The words that I speak, John 6, 63, are spirit yes. and they are life. Yes. Amen. 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 I wonder if there's one today with every head bowed and every eye closed. Is there one today that said, said Pastor, would you pray for me? I, 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 I perhaps I don't like that Jew. I've heard about the kingdom and I know a lot of scripture, but truth be told, I don't know if I'm saved or not. And I, I want to be saved. Is there one today that would say, with great humility and transparency, with no one looking around, every head bowed, every eye closed, but I'm looking right now. Is there anyone that would slip their hand up and say, Pastor, pray for me. I want to be saved. And then I'll lead everyone in this prayer, prayer of faith, confession. Anyone at all? Thank you. I see that hand. You can put it down. Anyone else? No one looking around. It's no one's business. So Jesus. Anyone else? All right. Say this with me. This is everyone. Everyone's going to say this confession together. Okay, are you ready? Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I come before you now. I come before you now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Your word says. Your word says. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Shall be saved. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I call upon you. I call upon you to save me. To save me. To make me whole. To make me whole. To make me clean. To make me clean. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Your word says. Your word says. If I confess with my mouth. If I confess with my mouth. The Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus. And believe in my heart. Believe in my heart. That God has raised Jesus from the dead. That God has raised Jesus from the dead. I'd be saved. I'd be saved. I believe it. I believe it. I confess it. I confess it. Jesus. Jesus. You are my Lord. You are my Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to close with the prayer in Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 through 24. This happens to be the oldest prayer uh, in, uh, in the Hebrew. Uh, in the Hebraic teaching, uh, Numbers is the, it's called the Aaronic Priestly Breath. Amen. Okay. And so, uh, as we pray, let's, can we stand? And then I will turn it back into the hands of the prophets and, and uh, other church officials, and, uh, and it will be concluded. But let us pray. I'm going to pray over you in the original Hebrew, and then I'll translated into English. Heavenly Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I bless your people. I do thank you so much that they do have ears to hear. The ones here, they don't need parables because they're not without ears to hear. They have understanding in their heart. Lord. And they have hunger. They are knocking, they're asking, they're seeking, and they're ready to go to the other side. Yes. So I'm asking that you would help them to do this in the name of Jesus. Now, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Father, I'm asking that you would bless your people. May you keep them or preserve them. Lift up your countenance upon them. Smile upon them. Be gracious unto them, Father. Give your grace, your hased to them. And demonstrate your abundant peace, your shalom. Yes. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.